Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Gregory Fritz. Uh, I'm a president of GramX Promotions. Uh, GramX Promotions is a highly specialized marketing company based in New York. And we specialize in bringing over artists from Europe uh, and organizing shows for them in the United States. New York, Chicago, Detroit, Toronto, Florida, those are our primary markets. And uh, uh, thank you for the lovely introduction. Um, <clears throat> I had the pleasure of working with many hip-hop groups from Poland, including Pacta Fonica, for which we organized the show in 2003, a long time ago, and it's actually uh, the show that we did in New York City was uh, happening during the time, the times where the movie is talking about. The, the movie is shot uh, right now, but it talks about those times, because what you're going to see today is not a... Uh, is not uh, what's happening with Polish hip hop or with Polish music right now. It, it's uh, what was happening with the music ten years ago. And uh, what I would like to tell you why this this movie is actually very very important, and it's uh, the significance of this movie being shown in New York is also important because, uh, as you all know, hip hop was born in New York City. And uh, for Maggie, who passed away. Um, uh, for him to be here spiritually with us right now in the mecca of hip hop is very important. So this is not just an ordinary screening, not a festival screening. This is a very special event and a very special moment for uh, for Polish hip hop altogether. Um, <clears throat> see, um, uh, Polish hip hop has been ignored by the media for many many years. Uh, it is still ignored by the Polish media until today. Uh, it evolved uh, in the early uh, 90s. Uh, you know, Poland had this vibrant history. We overthrew communism uh, by the end of the 80s. We had um, a very strong punk era in the 80s, which was called the Lost Generation. And the, the punk era evolved. Uh, after we uh, broke off from communism, many Western influences came to Poland. Uh, like reggae, uh, like reggae was there before, but not on su such a significant scale as it is right now. And also hip hop. And uh, Polish hip hop has uh, there's a great analogy of uh, how the Polish hip hop started in Poland with, uh, with the hip hop being started here in New York City because hip hop in New York City was born during really tough times during the 70s when New York City went bankrupt in 1979, uh, the blackout of 77. Uh, you know, people moved out of the city, and it was really, you know, uh, really tough time for New Yorkers. And uh, hip hop gave inspiration, gave uh, uh, brought the lights to the people on the weekends. They used to meet in the parks and uh, just uh, play music, guitars, congas, DJs, and that's how the whole culture evolved. And uh, it brought inspiration, it brought life, life to the gray uh, life of the people that lived here uh, during those tough times. Same thing in Poland, uh, during the great era of communism, uh, early 90s, uh, Poland was looking for its identity, especially the youth, especially the young people. Uh, they really were confused about uh, how to find themselves in the new system. Uh, you know, it was, the system wasn't fully established yet. Uh, you know, it's, uh, as you know, the transformation from communism to capitalism uh, always has victims, and the victims are usually the people on the on the bottom of the of the pyramid. And uh, seventy percent of people lived in poverty in Poland. Thirty percent lived in uh, extreme poverty. And um, Polish hip hop uh, gave inspiration to the Polish youth. Uh, tracks like Damy Rade, which means we're gonna make it, Pacto Fonica, uh, Caliber Forty Four, uh, those. Kids, uh, what you're gonna see today, and actually the, the remaining of those times, uh, they uh, created something out of nothing, and uh, they, that was the only way for them to exist spiritually, emotionally, and kind of sustain themselves in the in the era that they uh, were all to live in. And um, uh, it evolved. It evolved very strong. You see the. Uh, the great paradox about it uh, is the Polish hip hop right now. It is the third largest market in the European Union after England and after France. The most albums turning gold in Poland are hip hop. The most new albums turning uh, like up, up and coming artists and new artists coming out every year are from Polish hip hop. And uh, Polish hip hop is still not appreciated by the media until today, until this movie. This is. What you're going to witness today is actually the first time where uh, you're going to be able to see a story about Polish hip hop put on a big screen. And uh, <clears throat> I hope this is the beginning of, uh, of a revolution. 
uh, that's going to show the, the strength of this uh, music and that subculture in Poland. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, just, to give, just to give you a background about how, you know, how these guys are doing great today, you know, except for Maggie, obviously he's dead. But uh, Rahim owns his own company. Over here, you're going to see him uh, at the times when he was starting his company. Ten years ago, if these guys would have approached any media in Poland and tried to make a movie about what you're going to see, uh, they, they, they would be turned down. And be, um, uh, the media only wanted to write about bad stuff. They were looking for sensation. They treated them like hooligans, like uh, pathology, you know, like uh, these guys are just streets. Uh, from the street and uh, they uh, don't represent the Polish society very very well, but guess what? One million people saw this movie in one week. There's no other movie in Poland that received such a huge amount of uh, reception. Uh, the biggest YouTube channel in Poland is Prosto. Prosto, 320 million viewers, 80, 000, uh, 80 million subscribers. Uh, you got uh, clothing companies, you got uh, recording companies. What uh, the industry in Poland, the music industry, the media industry, and uh, they made those hip hoppers uh, create their own labels, their own clothing labels, their own musical labels, because the MTV wouldn't show them 10 years ago. You wouldn't see Jesteś Bogiem on MTV. Today, MTV wants to pay them in order for, uh, to, to be viewed because they know uh, there is no television in Poland, uh, musical television, except for Disco Polo maybe, that uh, exists without showing hip hop. Uh, tracks like um, Vauce was a hit in Poland in 2008. It was actually created here in New York City. And uh, <coughs> because of the fact that they were turned down by the media and uh, all those big corporations, they started their own labels, started, started their own distribution channels. They have their own television stations, and the Polish hip hop is fully independent at the moment in Poland. And uh, <clears throat> right now, uh, it's uh, and it's still inspirational. The, see, the great thing about it, if I, if I, you know, uh, you can't really compare American hip hop to Polish hip hop because the lyrics are different, the topics are different, the experiences are different. It's like rock, you know. It's just a medium. It's just a form of uh, of translating a message. And uh, you got you know rock bands talking about all different stuff. And uh, Polish hip hop is not a copy of American hip hop. You you don't see guys with gold chains talking about you know drugs and, and, and whatever they talk about. They talk about life. If I uh, if I wanted to describe Polish hip hop in one word, I would say the truth. That's they reflect the truth of the Polish society of the Polish youth living in the post communist Poland. Fifty years from now, if uh, somebody's gonna ask me. Uh, how would you describe living in post-communist Poland, you know, with the general feeling, how people felt, uh, what they uh, experienced? I would say, go listen to Polish hip-hop. That's, it's all there. It's like a book. I'm sure you're going to have teachers uh, 30, 20, maybe sooner, you know, with this movie being a historical event in Polish hip-hop, um, starting to realize that it, there, there's a message conveyed in it. There's a, there's a message of a certain generation. And it's uh, and I know how do I know it will happen because uh, it happened with Polish punk rock. Uh, punk rock. You had a uh, Polish Cultural Institute invite uh, this group Deserter uh, two years ago to tour America, and they presented this group as the uh, Polish punk rock group that uh, uh, fought communism. The Jarocin Festival. You know, uh, people during communism that was the only opportunity for them to gather and uh, to experience uh, unity and uh, show their uh, revolution against communists. Uh, Polish hip hop does exactly the same thing for the minds of the young people. And we're talking about millions of people being influenced by this music. And uh, it, Polish hip hop cannot be influenced by politicians or corporations because, like I said before, they are independent. And uh, from my own experience, I did over 150 events in the United States already. Uh, there's going to be uh, six more hip-hop shows, Polish hip-hop shows happening in New York City this year, so I'd like to invite you to them all. And uh, I want to tell you a story, how it works. Why am I doing it? Because uh, there is no money in this, uh, in this business uh, when it comes to doing this type of shows in New York. Uh, it's a very limited crowd, maybe three, two to five hundred people. So, uh, but I do it for, for the idea. Why? I did a show in 2007 in Greenpoint. Uh, the band's name was Gibera. And uh, when I was, you know, everybody were really happy, you know, enjoying the show. And there was this one guy, boy, he was crying. And I approached him and I asked him, what happened? You know, why, why are you crying? Uh, is something wrong? You know, somebody treats you bad or something like that? And he said, no. Uh, you know, I, I've been in America for three years and uh, I don't know any English. 
I'm uh, I cannot find myself over here. I'm uh, waiting for uh, I'm I'm missing my girlfriend, my homeland. I'm being backstabbed almost every day by uh, by my home uh, by my people, and this is the first time that um I can really feel like I'm back home, like I'm in Poland. And uh, so those hip hop hip hop shows they bring spirit to the people. They uplift them even here in New York City, Chicago, and um, different areas of uh, of United States where it's being listened to. So uh, uh, I mean. The last thing I want to say, uh, Magik, the the guy who the movie is about, uh, he made me listen to Polish hip hop. Uh, his first album was not with Paktofonika, uh, which the movie is about. It was with uh, this group called Caliber 44, and the first album was called Magia and Miecz, uh Magic and the Sword. And um, I haven't got a chance to meet him personally. I met the other two, uh, but uh, he really touched me, and he really was a magician, not only by his nickname. But the, by the way, he conveyed the word and the message, and the way I, I know he was a perfectionist. He could work on a on a, a paragraph of his lyrics for a week or two just to perfect it. He was a Picasso of a, of a word of a Polish language, and it's really hard to rap in Polish language, by the way. So, uh, guys, I can tell you many, many more stories about it, and uh, uh, I would like to invite you to some of my shows happening this year, and we're going to have uh, Pocahontas, which is the two other guys that you're going to see in the movie, coming to New York City next year, and right now, please enjoy this movie, and I uh, hope you're going to like it. Thanks. <laughs>